Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to continue on our talk about expression selectors. Check, uh, check, uh, check, uh, check it out. What's it all about? Casey Neistat's Q&A intro got inceptioned into my brain last week. All right, so let's get into this. So if you saw last week's video, you'll know that uh, I was looking for a looping solution for text expression selectors. And I found it. So if you're going to play with this, I would recommend you start with a simple like line of text rather than a whole graphical version because it's easier to figure out if it's actually working. So in this case, you can see we're just going to loop through the characters over and over and over again. We're doing that with a slider that we're going to use to offset it. Basically, we're taking the offset slider, modulusing it by the text total, rounding that, and then we're subtracting that offset from the text index and dividing that by the total number of characters. And then we're seeing that's, if that's equal to the first character, basically. But since this is shifting, it'll shift where the first character is down the line. This isn't the final technique. Uh, this is useful for like this kind of thing, but I wouldn't use this for any of the other techniques to follow. I'm just trying to show you the evolution. Whereas the last one basically just added the offset and checked to see if that was the right character. This one actually changes the index of the actual character and changes its value based on that index. This one has some extra steps that the other ones don't have, but this one started to work. So in this one, we started to check the range so that we can actually have the start and the end kind of loop together. And that's kind of the basis for the final technique. So do you remember the time? I mean, do you remember this one? The last time the endpoints didn't match up until we went through a couple of rotations, but now they're working. So let's actually look at how this technique works. So right now we just have a slider that basically goes one point per frame. So at like 10, it's 10, 20, it's 20. We're adding that to the text index, which remember this is all calculated per character. So for the first one, it's one, then two, three. So on the first frame, the offset is zero. So this is one. On the next frame, this is two, then this is three, then four, and so on. So then we're gonna set a new index and we're gonna do math.round like we did before. And we're gonna take that offset and then we're gonna modulus it by the total. So let's say this is 10 long. The next one, instead of being 11, it'll be zero. And then we set a range value. And the range value is linear of that index. As it goes from one to the total, it's gonna go from zero to one. And then based on that range, we're gonna either, if it's, if it's less than half, we're gonna make the range go from zero to 100. And if it's more than half, we're gonna go from 100 to zero. So that's gonna make like a bell curve in the middle. And that's it. But that leaves us with these two points. So I played around and improved that expression. And this one is to smoothness. So I didn't actually make this one much more complicated. In my control layer, I just added one more slider. And this one, you can keyframe or whatever. You can keyframe both of them. It doesn't really matter. But you basically want to stay under 0.5 on this thing. And then in the expression on the layer, I brought that in. So we got range, comp layer, slider. Then I changed that other range to range map. And now where this was 0 to 0.5, this now is 0.5 minus the range value. So what that's going to do is let us narrow the range. Instead of it being the whole way around, we can narrow this band. And so the next one is basically the opposite as it goes from 0.5 to 0.5 plus that range. And that's it. So now you can see if I change the range, I make it like 0.1, it's going to get more narrow. If I make it 0.4, it's going to be wider. So let's go back to 0.2. So I sped that up. It doesn't render the fastest, but you could do some cool stuff with it. And so if you turn this animator on that we had before, where it pushes the bits out, you'll actually be able to see that this is moving through rather than this whole layer rotating. This isn't the quickest render, but you can get an idea. But now you can see it's more like a wave. And so finally, we get to play around. So I put some more stuff together in this one from the previous tutorial. There's a little bit of randomization in there built with an amplitude slider, but that's pretty much it. And then this scale itself is animated. And despite its complexity, this one actually renders pretty quickly. So there are a ton of things that you can do with this, and now you don't have to worry about how to loop it. And that's it, guys. I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.